Hello, this is John again with a, another tutorial here uh, on utilizing QLab. This one is a little more in-depth uh, with QLab with MIDI commands. This is really useful if you only have one computer and you would like to utilize uh, programs such as Isidore, which has more powerful video processing, um, and you would like to keep QLab more specifically for the sound processing. The benefits of this being that only one computer is required. You don't have to set up a MIDI console. You don't have to buy any external hardware or route any MIDI cables. Um, all the addressing is done internally in the computer. Uh, so if a power outage occurs, it all goes down on one system and comes back on one system. So let's go ahead and get started. I just wanted to highlight really quick that on the website, if you Google uh, MIDI pipe, this is essential as the kind of go-between for these two programs. Um, you're going to want to download MIDI pipe right now, version 1.44. It is freeware, um, but you're going to come to this site. The key to this is to click on the picture. Um, I'm just including that because it took me uh, two minutes to figure out. I was looking around for the link, but if you click on that, then this page pops up and you can download now right here, which is really simple. Once you have that installed and dropped into your applications folder, I put it down on my tray here. Uh, you start up MIDI pipe as your first step. We'll go ahead and approve that. And you want to set in MIDI in and MIDI out. I'm double clicking here. And I'm going to set up my MIDI pipe input one. Uh, for some reason, the Isadora virtual ins, just to highlight really quick, uh, do not function if you use this. MIDI pipe is required even though that is a detected um, MIDI section. Same with QLab. Uh, so MIDI pipe a useful pass-through as you can see. And I guess I'll just give this uh, a name. And then we just minimize that and keep that running in the background, uh, which is why I included in my tray. Anytime I want to start this up, I'm just going to click on that icon. Or possibly, if you want um, to make it easier, just open at login. And anytime you start up this account for the show, if that's what you're using it for, or for your VJ event, or whatever it is you're doing, an installation, um, this can open at login. That's also really useful if you save an Isadora or a QLab file you can drag that file to your tray and you'll have the option to open it login so that when you start up a computer it will instantaneously load into the first queue um, for whatever you have programmed. So speaking of programming, we're going to go ahead and start. In QLab, the first thing we're going to do is go to Preferences. I'm going to head to um, MIDI command here and I'm going to go to MIDI pipe input 1, just like we set in the MIDI pipe and I'll go ahead and just create my first MIDI file here and call it my Isadora test queue. And under MIDI message, I'm just going to go ahead and use the uh, middle C here. Uh, recommendation of 60. And a velocity, we'll just give it an even 100. Um, what I do like about the MIDI commands is they allow you to differentiate. You have a uh, numerous amount of possibilities for these node-ons. Um, and they just treat it as different types of, a different address really for each command as it's sent through the MIDI pipe into Isadora. So in Isadora, we have a MIDI column here where I can look for a MIDI note. Make that a little bit bigger. A note on watcher. And by default, it's checking all ports, all channels, all pitches, and all velocities. Um, which I'll just leave that open now for detection purposes. The next thing we do is we head to show status and this will show and verify that we are receiving MIDI in between the two. So if I leave that uh, in the foreground here, it is a separate window from Isadora, I can click into QLab and I can fire this test queue. I'll click go and right away I can detect that something isn't correct here. So I go back into Isadora uh, a couple things I have to do is set up my MIDI right off the bat. So my input port can be the MIDI pipe output 1. And we'll see if that sets it off now. Uh, 
and there we go. So if you see, we had this little block right here uh, light up green because we were using channel 1. That's something you can check here. Channel 1, okay. And then we have a pitch of 60 and a velocity of 100. Quite useful, exactly what we set. Uh, something that's really nice about Isadora too, and like I said, the way that these become addresses now, is the value 60 and 100 were sent into Isadora. So I can use those values as a specific trigger as well. So if I want a specific action or a specific value to occur inside of Isadora, let's say I want 65 for some reason. So I'll set that at 65, and if I press that cue to go, then in Isadora you see the pitch change to 65 in addition to triggering the trigger. So this is extremely useful if I want to jump into another scene. And I can just maybe set that as a basic trigger. So as soon as any MIDI is sent from QLab on that port, um, I can go ahead and just go to the next one here, which will jump us into an empty scene as of right now. Boom. And there you go. So you can see that we are operating Isadora without actually even having any uh, operator functioning inside of Isadora which, again, is incredibly useful for a number of reasons, but hopefully you'll be the one to figure out what those are. So again, this is Jonathan with Generic Labs, and that's our video tutorial on QLab controlling Isadora uh, through a MIDI interface.